We're on the South Platte Ranger District, which is part of the Pike National Forest. This is an area where we've done some thinning. And what thinning is, is our attempt to reduce the intensity of a wildfire. By removing some of the trees out of the forest, it creates more space in between the trees, which reduces the likelihood of that fire going into the, the top of the tree or the canopy and racing across. What the spacing does is it creates what we call a ground fire which is typically lower intensity and has many benefits to the environment. One of the goals of these treatments is to reduce what we call ladder fuels. If you can imagine a ground fire traveling across the surface and coming to a cache of fuel like this and then making the transition up to this tree, this tree going to this tree, and making its way all the way up into the crown of this tree, the, those are the types of situations we want to avoid. When the fire goes into the crown, it burns hotter and faster. So our goal is to reduce these ladder fuels to keep the fire on the ground where it's low intensity and beneficial to the environment. So we're standing on the Colorado Trail, which bisects one of the treatment units. This was an area that was thinned and the, the dead trees were left on the ground. We have worked with the Mile High Youth Corps to bring them in to pile this material, which we will burn in the winter to reduce the amount of ground fuel. This is an area where we thinned the forest and left the material on the ground. This material over time will decompose and provide nutrient cycling and benefits for the soil, as well as moisture retention and shading for some of the plants. This is an example of what a catastrophic high intensity wildfire looks like. This is the Heyman fire and this occurred at a massive scale. As you can see, it went all the way across the valley to the top of the ridges and all the way down the South Platte River into Cheeseman. All of this area affected flows directly into the reservoir and it affects the water quality. These trees that you're looking at were planted in 2005. When these trees grow up and mature, they're gonna be the seed source for the next forest. So this area was selected because it is surrounded by so much devastation and this is a little island designed to provide the stock for the next generation of the forest. Denver Water sees a lot of benefit in reforestation projects because even though this tree is small it's still holding back soil and sediment from entering into our reservoirs. When we talk about sediment this is what we mean really crumbly, loose, gravel-like, soil and this surrounds our reservoirs on the upper south flat watershed when it rains this sediment runs into our rivers and fills up our reservoirs and causes water quality issues this area is in one of our priority watersheds and this area was burned by a high intensity catastrophic fire rainfall comes down the mountainside washes away the sediment into the stream and this stream feeds directly into Strontia Springs Reservoir. This area is a perfect example of what it looks like when all the pieces of forest restoration come together. The first step was coming in and mechanically treating or thinning the forest. The next step is applying prescribed fire to the ground, which reduces some of the ground fuels and also aids with nutrient cycling for the plants. After those two steps, what you're left with is a much healthier forest that's less prone to high intensity wildfire. It's important to understand that our goal is not to prevent fire. These ecosystems are dependent on fire. They've evolved over millions of years with fire and they need fire to be healthy and resilient. Our goal is to realign the forest such that when there is a fire, it will be a beneficial low intensity fire versus a destructive high intensity fire. And what that does in the long run is it protects our water supply and it maintains and improves the health and resilience of the forest.